there was never a decision to go, hey, I want to become an artist. It was just a decision that I wanted to make art. When I was 15, I started painting and that was it, man. Like, I never really looked back. It's like anything, you can have talent, but if you're not committed and keep at it, you don't get anywhere. My name is Regan Amatha and I'm an emerging artist from Melbourne. I've been painting for about, well, 15 years, but 10 years since I finished my studies. So at the end of 2010, I was awarded the Sandra Barter Studio Grant uh, through Appleton Street Studios. And basically it's a, a space for a year as well as a $5,000 stipend towards your materials. Morning, do it so. I don't look at people's work when they come and I look at their work ethic. So whatever, they, whatever your practice is, if you do it with passion and if you do it. All he really wants to do is paint. Like, I mean, he has a full-time job that kind of supports, you know, the, the financially what we want to accomplish. Um, I, I think eventually the goal for both of us is to get him to be able to paint full-time. When I actually applied for the space here, like, I had to put through an application as to how I would use the space. And given that 2010 it was a weird year. I did 12 paintings for the year, like that was it. But at the same time, like it was kind of successful in terms of being selected as a finalist for painting, art, for art prizes and stuff like that, and a few group shows, etc. etc. Like I got selected for the Wireless Scholarship again, which was like the third time I've been selected as a finalist, and I was kind of hoping that would be the year that I'd finally crack it. Like, he has racked up a number of. of uh, finalist in, in awards, that's one measure of success. He's uh, got, uh, he's represented by uh, various galleries, both in, in Melbourne and, and interstate. So, yeah, those are levels of success that an artist can measure, but perhaps the you know, parents don't measure it that way. You know, perhaps the, the general public, you know, where's the flash car, you know, those sort of levels of success. So it's a difficult one and I think when you turn 30 you start to look at, you know, am I kidding myself? Is this success? Where do I want? How am I going to measure my success? And I think that's, that's a tricky thing. Like I don't think you can take art too seriously sometimes. I found that for a while there I did, you know, like I, I got too serious about it and got bogged down and, and wasn't enjoying the making of the art so much. Young artists, you know, they get their, their first break, they rush up here, and then inevitably then there's a time when what fueled their art in the first, the first couple, three, four years, starts, they start to doubt it. Because I finished uni in 2001, put on a couple of shows, uh, and, you know, Clive was sort of saying, look, you should, you know, maybe go overseas and see what's happening over there and wander around and have a look at what people are doing and what people have done. You know, like I came home with all these ideas and all these pictures and catalogues and inspiration and then everything I made, I destroyed. It either wasn't good enough or it didn't work out or it wasn't quite what I wanted it to be, you know, like because you just seen everything you'd ever studied and um, so much of the world's culture, etc, etc, that it just paled in comparison. How did you resolve it? Um, it kind of became the subject of the show, like the, the frustration and um, like it was a particular show, like a, we ended up calling the show Ignite. A lot of the earlier work uh, kind of reflected a lot on you know, the heavy weight of our history and what it is to be uh, an artist nowadays. You're reflecting on a hundred years of art history where things have changed so much and people have done so much and pushed the boundaries so much that where can we possibly take it? And from that came an interest in the sort of marks we leave behind rather than those we try to make. So rather than when you're like trying to like you know, draw on here, blah blah blah, you get the drips or when you go and clean the brush, for a long time I just had canvas on the floor and it would pick up all the marks from the work that you were working on. 
I'd actually kind of gone through all my old work and done a bit of a catalogue of this is what I had left and I've started working on the collage pieces. Um, so I, I think that painting ended up having you know, five or six years worth of different paintings here and there, like different sections. So it was, it was kind of a, a mash-up of what I've done, you know, like since I finished uni. The last big show I did in 2009 at Earth, the Movement Masher show, um, oh, that was very, you know, like really heavy collage base. And I think the contemporary left over this process that I've been using um, had probably started to overrun the structure of the work a little bit. There's a core idea, and then you know, experiences like going overseas or seeing a lot of art or being in Melbourne or uh, showing in all sorts of cities and things um, starts to kind of make him concentrate, and it happens to a lot of artists, concentrate on what he sees as the opposition. So in other words, sort of the extraneous things come into his art that aren't part of the core. Um, and so really, for Regan's kind of artist, the, the trick is to somehow reconnect with your core. I guess the grant and the space um, was a really good opportunity and came along at the right time for me to get back into the studio, focus on some new work, and I guess also uh, reflect on what I've done over the past 10 years and, and look at consolidating that and moving into some new work. And I think now he's, he's especially I think being at the Atherton Street studio, the grant there really helped him um, take a backward step, have, a, uh, have another look, uh, address, and as I said, revisit drawing where you can solve your problems and it's not all just Bam, bam, and away we go. So I think, yeah, that sort of reflection uh, time and being with others and having others look at the work and him seeing others' works in progress has been really good for him. At Appleton Street Studios, there's 16 different studios. It's just two story complex. So there's quite a few artists working across different genres, different mediums. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, there was probably two or three people that I really connected with. Jeff, as I might have mentioned before, was in the studio behind me, so we quite often jump in, you know, between each other's studios and look at what we were working at and discuss the direction and possible ideas. Um, it's been really good to, you know, get to know um, Fletcher and be able to work with, with Fletcher as well, you know, like throughout the year we've not only given each other advice and support, but we've actually started to work on a collaborative project where we're exchanging works and finishing each other's works and things like that. So again, you're looking at somebody else's work differently, but then that's reinterpreting your own practice as well. It's, it's hard to translate something that is a visual thing into, you know, into words, you know what I mean, to explain it, to theorise it. So when uh, when you've got somebody else like Regan who is very uh, vocal with his ideas and he's got a very interesting way of uh, creating a very unique kind of process that you go through, he's, he's uh, he's through necessity he's developed his own vocabulary. It's nice to to hear it, to get your ideas um, kind of presented to you in a way that you've not seen. It's like you know seeing it through a different tint. You know? um, this is this has been a little bit different. I think the the subject matter has been a little bit more specific. Uh, I guess prior to this year and before I even went into the studio, uh, we spent a day with friends doing a couple of photo shoots for some research on two projects that I was interested in. Uh, one that was a figurative project based on dancing and movement and the other was uh, portraits which is obviously where I've kind of gone down the avenue of this year. And I think the portraits really appeal, appealed to me at the beginning of the year because I was looking to get back into some drawing before I even started looking at, at what I was doing with the painting. It was a technique I learned when I was doing live drawing in high school and university. Uh, where you do those, you would complete a drawing by not looking 
at the start. I'm not looking at the page, just looking at the subject, so mm -hmm. it's like just continuous line drawing. Regan's certainly a, a, a man who, who's very much a renaissance man when it comes to his mediums. He's always exploring new ways and new facets of, of, of different kinds of paint. He, he uses enamel, oil, you know, whatever's lying around the studio, he'll just grab and use it. You know, the canvas on the floor and, you know, works, you know, emptying spray cans on on random canvases and just drying the brush out wherever he can and there's spillages and lid stains and all kinds of stuff just happening around him and uh, out of nowhere he's just like oh yeah that, that, that bit on the floor looks awesome I'm just gonna I'll, I'll cut that out and I'll stick that out to my next painting and stuff and that's brilliant it was like literally you walk in there and the artwork was like growing everywhere you went and that, that was cool. Uh, and when I went back into the studio I sort of returned to a lot of the work I was doing earlier on with the drawing and the printmaking and looking at combining all of those elements with the painting and the construction. So I kind of stripped things back um, to the beginning and going back to the basics and looking at the most minimal elements of the work, uh, but trying to maintain you know, the impact of the work, but also that interest in the mark making as well. It's still got that big, strong, bold line. It's got that edge of the street feel. It's got the you know, the found objects, working, you know, with wit, with the found objects, with the science, you know, no lines, and dig, and all of those things. It's actually, you know, he's talking about doing the art, digging into it, getting there, it's like in his box of clever, and he's like, you know, a bit dodgy and weave uh, in the art world as well. So he's got these sort of strings um, and throws, you know, flows through his work. If I could be brave enough to say that I guess I've kind of found my voice a little bit more. He's actually kept some of that really young energy in the work and in fact this show it's actually revisited some of that line and I say you know it's the art boy has grown up and revisited his past and recreated it in his current self. Yeah like I guess with the past year like having Scored the studio here and got engaged and getting married and growing up and buying a house and doing all those adult responsible mature things. Um, like we finally, I think, killed off Art Boy. And as Carolyn put it, she's like, you know, you've killed off Art Boy and now the art man is starting to appear. This body of work really represents uh, him fighting that, that first battle that every artist is Come out of this one in flying colours, which is great. I was really keen to have this exhibition here from the, from the Appleton, you know, selected from the Appleton Street uh, studio of the year because it's, it's sort of like his home. Yeah? <laughs> you, if you hadn't have gotten this opportunity, what would you be doing now? What, what would have changed? Uh, I think I'd probably still be doing the same thing. Um, like, I'd still definitely be painting. Nothing will ever stop me from painting. Like, that's, that's all I've ever wanted to do since I was a teenager. I guess I probably would have bitten the bullet and set up a, a smaller studio here, um, which would have been doable, but I think to an extent it would have, would have meant compromising what I was working on, but also not having the benefit of dealing with other artists, being in a communal art space, sharing ideas and being able to, you know, discuss what we're working on and, you know, just what's happening in general and also having that support network. Um, and I mean, apart from being able to, you know, focus on my painting and undertake a whole new series of work, one of the things that has been really beneficial about the Studio Grant and, and the space has been interacting with, with other artists again because I've been working on my own or you know had a solitary studio for so long that it kind of helped uh, develop the work a little bit more you know even without meaning to. Regan's one of them guys that, that that's going to be uh, working really hard you know forever you know uh, art is a war of attrition and Regan certainly you know he's going to keep standing up no matter what happens. The part of being an artist you know is about four percent talent and 96 percent kind of that ability to continue to go no matter what happens and, and Regan certainly has that, that aspect to his practice. You know, he, he if if the world ended and he was the only dude on earth, you know, and, and there was nothing to do, he'd figure out a way to continue making his art.
because in a way he makes it for himself as, as well as for everyone else. I think I'll always be involved in art, you know, like I'll, I'll be creating art until the day I die, regardless of whether I'm successful or not.